Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to join us for our first online Perth Ambassador meeting. Uh, I know that this is an incredibly challenging time for the region, our, our country, and obviously globally. Uh, I think when we met face to face back in January, I don't think any of us could have envisaged quite uh, the scale of the impact that COVID-19 would have, not just on the economy, but right across all aspects of our daily lives. So there's no question it's been, uh, I think we have to say, a very brutal uh, few months, uh, even with the various job retention, uh, business loan and other sector support schemes that were rapidly put uh, in place. Uh, and here in Perth and Kinross, we've seen some high profile organisations in a number of sectors uh, sadly forced to look at redundancies. And, and I think we have to be realistic that there will be more in the months ahead. Uh, and these are not just uh, statistics, these involve people. It has a knock-on effect on families and also on our various communities. So it's been a heartbreaking time uh, for a lot of people um, uh, and also for a lot of businesses uh, that have done so much over so many years to create uh, employment and prosperity in our region. Uh, and I know that Perth and Kinross Council's uh, various teams uh, and Skills Development Scotland have been working very closely uh, to support employees that uh, are affected. But at the same time as battling the challenges of COVID-19, I think it's also important to reflect on the huge pooling together that we've seen uh, among stakeholders right across Perth and Kinross. And that's from the city of Perth to the various towns and rural communities right across uh, the region. And we've some, seen some fantastic examples, I think, of businesses pivoting their operations from restaurants, switching to home delivery, to companies producing face coverings and office screens for the new normal of social distancing. And I, I think it's in a crisis like this that we're really judged for a few things. One, our immediate response. Uh, secondly, the ability that we've got to, to rebuild, how we revive and also how we renew our economy and how our region. So I hope today is going to be an opportunity for us to focus on some of the positive and forward looking agenda that we really need to have. And I think one thing is for sure, uh, the strength and partnership working that uh, we have across our Perth Ambassador Network will be more important than ever as we look ahead. Uh, the future is going to be dramatically different, uh, but out of this crisis, I think there's going to be an opportunity to build back better. And I'm delighted this morning that we're going to be hearing from Perth and Kinross Council who've been at the heart of a lot of the response locally. Uh, in a slight change, we have uh, Executive Director Barbara Renton who will present this morning uh, in place of Chief Executive Karen Reid. We'll also hear the thoughts of Stephen Leckie, uh, Chairman and CEO of Creef Hydro and President of Perthshire Chamber of Commerce. And also Jackie Beerton, who's the CEO of uh, Growbiz. Uh, and I'd first of all like to thank them personally for giving up their valuable time. I know that there are lots of uh, differing pressures on them all at the moment and their time is much appreciated. After we've heard from our speakers, there will be an opportunity for everyone to ask questions. Uh, on your Microsoft Teams control panel, uh, you'll be able to select the Q&A function. Uh, you can type your question in the the box there and send it uh, and you can send that question where named or anonymously it's entirely up to yourselves we've got a producer here supporting the meeting today so hopefully the the technology will uh, will work and we'll be able to address any challenges that pop up uh, just to let you know as well that we'll be recording this morning's meeting so we can share the content with any ambassadors that aren't able to join us live today uh, we know everyone's busy, so uh, after a brief wrap up from myself at, at the end, we should be finished for around 11 o'clock. So firstly, can I introduce uh, Barbara Renton from Perth and Ross Council? Uh, you'll recall that at an earlier meeting, uh, we had uh, a presentation from Karen Reed, uh, about her vision for the new Perth and Ross offer. OK, um, I think Stephen's just frozen there for a little bit, so I'll just pick up from there. Thank you very much and good morning. 
Um, Karen Reid, our chief executive, as Stephen says, sends her apologies. She would have loved to have been here this morning doing this presentation, um, but has finally been persuaded to take some well-earned uh, annual leave. So you have me instead, and as Stephen said, I'm Barbara Renton. I'm the executive director for housing and environment with the council, but I'm also currently undertaking the role of the council's gold commander. Um, as part of our civil contingencies response to the COVID-19 emergency. However, while we're still addressing uh, parts of the response in some areas, it's now time to focus on the recovery and renewal for the whole of Perth and Kinross, and that's building on what Stephen had said as part of his introduction. Chris, could you move on to slide two? Thank you. Karen. As Stephen said, previously spoke at an earlier ambassador event about the Perth and Kinross offer, which was really well received. What we have seen across the whole of Perth and Kinross has been of an unprecedented nature. Our residents, our communities, our partners, everyone has been impacted as a result of losses of loved ones on people's health and well-being, the impact of schools closing, and then the consequential home learning opportunities the impact on people's income, livelihood and work. But the response over the last 14 weeks has been incredible, collectively showing kindness, empathy, determination and resilience. Fundamentally, it has been the Perth and Kinross offer in practice. Going forward, what we need to do now is to continue to harness those strengths that have been demonstrated into the recovery and renewal phase. This will not be easy, and while it would be simple to focus on the short term, we need to be bold and we need to be brave and look to the long term and the Perth and Kinross offer we would like to live, work and do business in. Our elected members on Wednesday approved a framework for recovery and renewal based on the five E's of the Perth and Kinross offer. Education and learning, environment, equalities and fairness, empowerment and economy and entrepreneurship. And that's the focus of my short presentation this morning in terms of the recovery and renewal phase for the economy. But while the Council approved that framework, it's very clear that it can't be simply done by the Council itself taking it forward. What we have witnessed over the last um, three months with the COVID response is the strength of working together. And this needs to continue to ensure we collectively work together to deliver the best recovery and renewal possible for the whole of the area. The focus for this morning's presentation is therefore on what we can do to support the renewal and recovery programme for business and the economy. Chris, the next slide, please. Thank you. So our collective response to date has included working together by establishing a COVID-19 ta business task force with Business Gateway, Robiz, Scottish Enterprise, the Chamber of Commerce, Federation of Small Businesses, Perth Your Tourism Partnership and the Perth and Traders Association along with the Council. This has been underpinned by open and consistent communication with the business community, weekly task force meetings, 500 inquiries, weekly bulletins to 1000 businesses and 250 individuals, and we've conducted the business barometer survey and more of that later. We've provided via the Scottish Government financial support to more than 3,300 businesses who have received grants of more than £33.3 million and we've also offered rent deferrals to council tenants. We've also provided emergency support and advice through online and phone contact to as one-to-one -one advisory services targeted webinars, um, we've developed social and business networking opportunities and supported the Buy Local, Eat Local campaign. And we've raised any business issues at Scottish and UK levels as appropriate. Next slide, please, Chris. Pre-COVID, our local economy was doing well, all reflect, reflecting a really positive collective achievement. We were experiencing growth, we had high rates of employment, we'd seen a reduction in the earnings gap, and there was a really good business creation and growth across the area. 
However, post-COVID, the predicted impact is not positive, as identified from a range of financial uh, statistical sources and the Business Barometer survey, which was conducted in June, which had over a thousand responses. These told us that there's been a rise in unemployment across Perth and Kinross, with 20% of our businesses either planning to or already having cut staff numbers. There's a potential further rise in unemployment once the job retention or the furlough scheme ends. There are currently 19,700 employees on that scheme across Perth and Kinross. Our young people, low skilled and those employed in areas such as tourism, retail and construction are the most likely to feel the future impact. And there is an anticipated rise in business closures for more than 25% of the business barometer respondees, they said this was their most num their, their top concern. And 80% of our respondees have reported a loss of income, particularly in tourism, in the rural area, and for retail in Perth, and in, in Perth City. As a result of this detailed information, we must use it to build our collective economic recovery priority actions based on the needs of our businesses and our economy. The business needs highlighted in the survey are here on screen. So 25, more than 25% wanted to develop more online sales, direct delivery. 46% wanted more focus on events and promotion of the area to bring visitors back. 43% wanted support to access finance. 36% wanted a focus on encouraging local goods and services and 26% wanted more investment in digital infrastructure and connectivity. And workforce travel to work was a concern going forward. So our current thinking is that the economic recovery plan could have well-being at its core. So the well-being of our people, the well-being of our businesses and the well-being of our place with the following themes. A coordinated approach across all partners to engagement, more digital businesses and online sales and customer fulfillment, a more rapid move to full fiver and more active travel to improve our connectivity across the area. In terms of skills, reskilling and upskilling individuals um, with an emphasis on core and advanced digital skills, entrepreneurship and business confidence with embedding a bit a spirit of enterprise and community wealth. Fewer but more ambitious projects such as the Perth Eco Innovation Park to deliver a real focus for the area. And that links to clean growth and maximising the economic opportunity for Perth and Kinross to be able to seize those opportunities and to take them forward. And then using our natural capital and those natural assets that we're so very proud of within the area as the basis of our tourism and food and drink industries. And then reimagining our city, our towns and our neighbourhoods to see what it would look like post COVID and to work that through with our residents, our communities and our citizens. If Karen was here, her message would be clear. Perth and Kinross has many assets, for example, our natural environment and the fact that collectively we've seen our local economy doing so well. We need to continue to build on these along with what we've learned and will continue to learn as part of our response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Collectively as ambassadors, we have a vital role to play and all of us have something to offer. We will need, amongst other things, to promote a positive recovery and renewal message to offer reassurance and redynamize business confidence. We will need to offer peer support, peer to peer support to businesses and entrepreneurs to strengthen our business community. And we will continue to tell the live life well message developed through the Perth story to champion and support the area's key strengths, of which there are many, along with those key strategic projects that I mentioned earlier. This is a time to think confidently, to think bravely, to endeavour to be more fleet of foot and responsive. And the Council, as an ambassador, wants to support and embrace this approach. And finally, in terms of next steps, so a draft economic recovery plan for Perth and Kinross is currently being consulted on amongst our economic development partners. 
and will be shared more widely after the Council has considered it at the end of July at a special meeting. In the spirit of the Perth and Kinross offer, we all have something to offer, so we would ask you to continue to look uh, to bring forward your thoughts and ideas and, let, and share them with us. This will not be a short term approach and there will be no easy solutions, but collectively we will need our concerted commitment for at least the next three to four years, and if not longer, and to be successful, we will need all of our ambassadors and all of our partners to work together to support our economic recovery and renewal. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, that uh, that was an excellent overview for us, um, and I, I think that uh, theme around about collaboration is extremely important. Uh, and John Till, actually, who we worked with on the Perth story, um, I, I know he, he had a, a post on social media this morning where he was talking about that very thing, the importance of collaboration and the way forward. So uh, could I take this opportunity to pass on a, a real thanks to the senior leadership team, the, the frontline staff, also our elected councillors as well for everything that they've done in what has been an incredibly hectic number of months. And we really owe uh, all of you a debt of gratitude. Uh, I'd now like to uh, introduce Stephen Leckie. Uh, Stephen has made, uh, uh, has an incredibly important role across a, a lot of uh, Perth and Kinross activity. Uh, in his role as uh, the President of the Chamber, also Lord Lieutenant, uh, and he also has a, a business of his own to run, and I know that he's had to take some incredibly difficult decisions to protect his own business recently. Uh, we hope that the Scottish Government announcement about reopening tourism uh, will help to provide some light at the end of the tunnel for Stephen and also for the hospital hospitality sector more widely. Um, we're going to hear from Stephen today about some of the work the Chamber has been doing, how the Chamber has been there for its members, uh, and also see, hear from Stephen on his personal insight into how business is pulled together and how, looking forward, the Chamber can support uh, the business community with its recovery and resilience programme. Stephen. Uh, thank you, Stephen. So you can see there on the first slide, the Perthshire Chamber of Commerce we talk about Perthshire, not just Perth, the county of Perthshire, 400 odd members, large and small around the county. So next slide, please, Chris. So of course, this is one of the biggest challenges we've all faced. Um, Perthshire Chamber of Commerce, this is about communities pulling together, focusing on survival from that dreadful day around the 20th of March, when we realized many of us were going to have to close our businesses, the panic, of what to do next, the feeling of being alone. How do you figure out your livelihood? How do you think about new opportunities? Look after your customers and the community surrounding the people that work with you. And we've seen some lovely examples, local businesses, new and innovative ways of working, distilleries producing sanitizer. Although I know from my own experience, we produce sanitizer in our distillery down in our Peebles and the price of uh, sanitizer have, has dropped right off the end. So if you're buying sanitizer, buy it well. Manufacturers, schools, those with access to 3D printers uh, producing much needed PPE equipment. Isn't that great? Face masks, shields for the NHS and businesses, factories and so on who need these sort of items of equipment. So many have uh, realized the increase in online capabilities. We know that, we hear that loud and clear. Look at the number of Zoom calls, team calls like this, Starleaf, Skype calls. Um, I know Vicky has been involved with over 70 Zoom calls since, uh, since March. Uh, the online capabilities are huge for our industry as well. So huge innovation and speed showing, astounding, um, and an army of volunteers. And of course, um, a special thank you to those who are particularly helping out um, in the way that they care about the local community and just helping out. In my role as Lord Lieutenant, I have the honour of being able formally to thank many of these people, your people, um, on behalf of the Queen. I have already written 30 or so letters. If you have any ideas about local folk to you who you think deserve a letter from the Lord Lieutenant on behalf of the Queen, then please do write to Vicky or me 
indicating who it is you wish to be nominated and uh, and why the address and details and so on. And of course, I will be delighted to write to them. Right, so the next slide, please, slide three, please. I think the first thing to say was, look, we realise that not all businesses have received help. Uh, not all businesses have, have, have received the help that they required. I know from um, many conversations with the chief executive of the council, the council has been very good and very quick about paying out, and that's been well received by those who have had it. But it's tough for us all. We know that. Now, I'm not going to read through this slide. I'm going to just let you figure out all these things, the sort of things that Perthshire Chamber of Commerce is doing. The mobilising of networking, perhaps, is the, one of the things I want to talk about. Bringing members together, that has been really good. Folk just want to talk and understand how to, how to cope with their payroll, how to pay, how to apply, how to furlough staff. And the questions that have been asked, some folk are too embarrassed to ask out loud, but it's really nice to have them asking them in the privacy of a phone call with Vicky and on these um, Zoom meetings. The Perthshire Chamber of Commerce has been talking to many MSPs and MPs across governments. That's good. The Bank of England stuff, that's good. That's been well received. The chat with all these sort of folk. Um, and, uh, and earlier on, we focused very much on speaking to businesses. You know, when your world collapses, what do you do? Where do you go? Well, the first protocol for many, and we're delighted to say this, has been the Perthshire Chamber of Commerce a listening ear, somebody used to help you out, talk through your problems, and a lot of folk just want to talk. Uh, slide four, please. Thank you. So the Recovery and Resilience Programme. This is about putting in touch, putting you in touch, putting businesses in touch with each other, accessing the skills, the many skills that we have around the county from large companies and small companies. People don't like People don't like asking for help, but through the Perthshire Chamber of Commerce, they seem to have they've, they've found that help uh, through our own resources, our own membership and our own partners. And that's been, again, well received. So, um, so our, our members, the landscape business in Perthshire, 80% of our members are rural and micro businesses. So not everyone in the Perthshire Chamber of Commerce or any Chamber of Commerce are large businesses. 80% are small businesses, the smallest of sole traders, as well as some of the largest, covering many, many sectors around the county. And at all sorts of stages in their business life cycles. And that's part of the flexibility of this recovery and resilience program. Members rallying around to offer support. So Vicky and the team in, in the Chamber of Commerce have been harnessing this, hence the creation of the recovery and resilience program. So as a foundation showing just goodwill to begin with, the gener generosity of our members um, who, who, who make up the membership, the valuable network, the highly skilled, experienced and passionate business people who are willing and offer to help give of their time. Um, I think through consultation, identifying some of the most pressing issues, creating a new set of service product and um, products, um, and we put them into four areas. You can see the four categories there. new and traditional mentoring. Perthshire Chamber of Commerce, the, the Chamber of Commerce network has delivered delivered our men mentoring for many, many years. This continues, um, but it's now being updated to address the more recent critical issues over a shorter time scale, um, often with more than one business expert. Coaching, coaching through mentoring to help businesses and individuals to make decisions, to plan for the future, to survive, and the identification of new skills requirements continue to grow, training requirements, leadership, people leading the businesses, their teams against these turbulent times. The International Club, well, we need to look at more potential growth where our current markets have shrunk and where there's less general confidence using the Chamber Network. The Innovation and Ideas Hub, adapting to new ways of uh, working to sustain our business to help create new businesses as we hit face a hike in unemployment numbers. And uh, the fourth is Solutions Centre. Well, people don't always know who to turn to. They need help. Most people need quite a lot of help at the moment. It's lonely in the business. We're, we're hearing that from our businesses. And so isn't it just nice that they can call in and contact with the Chamber of Commerce to understand a bit more and share more um, about their problems. 
Uh, slide five, please. Thank you. So ongoing lobbying is a core member, a core activity of the chamber. The pressing matters, how do we trade successfully, making sure all our businesses are heard from micro businesses, rural locations to our largest ones, city, town centres, relevant, finding the relevant decision makers, putting them in contact with the right people, definitely strength in numbers. Digital connectivity, that's crucial. We hear it time and time again, it's the growth of digital in our market and of course, loving local, looking at shortening our supply chains where we can, both in public and private, nudging up alongside this ambassador programme with the, with the Perth and Kinross Council, communication with the council, what the council are doing, isn't it good to have this this morning? Thank you. And of course, marketing and promotion of our local businesses, buying local where we can. We're all keen to do the right thing by our staff and our customers, all keen to make sure we look after our staff and customers from a PPE point of view and finding out what sort of kits do you need to buy for when you open your hair salon, for example, on the 15th of July when the timing is right. So this is about marketing and promotion of our businesses. It's as simple as that at the moment for us right now, conveying, conveying a strong joined up message and um, whilst folk are living in the loneliness of their own home, wondering what else is going on around them as they read the bad news on the television. So thank you. We want to encourage uh, inward investment and promote what we can around this lovely county that we're all privileged to live in. Thank you, Craig, that's me. get goes unnoticed but uh, it's made a huge amount of difference and I think it shows in the current uh, situation the value of organisations such as the Chamber and the, the whole collective that uh, that brings. Can I just before I introduce Jackie Breerton just remind everyone just to I've seen a few questions come in on the, the feed so I think we've lost Stephen momentarily, so if we perhaps could move to, to Jackie's piece now, if possible. Yes, hello, good morning. Um, thanks, Stephen. Um, and thanks for the invitation to um, to say something today. Um, Grobe is, which um, some of you will be familiar with, is very much about rural enterprise support. So we complement a lot of what the Chamber um, already does. Um, but we work specifically with a range of uh, rural micro businesses and also social enterprises uh, across Perth and Kinross. Um, just before I go on to uh, say a bit more about what we do and what's happening at the moment, um, I also want to mention that I, I chair something called the LEADER Local Action Group. So LEADER is a rural development programme that's supported across Scotland. Um, every rural area of Scotland has a LEADER programme. And Perth and Kinross got just over three million pounds to administer and invest in rural projects um, over the last four years. And that has really proven its worth, particularly, I think, in the last few months where a lot of the projects that we funded have been able to provide essential services and, and strengthen uh, what's happening, both from a community and a, an enterprise perspective. Uh, and one of the things we're doing is lobbying Scottish Government to make sure that we get that kind of funding going into um, our rural areas uh, going forward. Chris, could you put the first slide up, please? Thank you. So just um, quickly over, uh, just looking at what we offer as, as Grobis. Uh, this is what we've always offered, but what we've managed to do in the last three months is adapt all the services very quickly um, so that they're delivered digitally and we've been able to actually support even more businesses. So any business can, can come and get one-to-one -one support through one of our team of enterprise facilitators. We've got around 20 of those from all sorts of different business sectors. Um, so they can have um, specific topic support, but also, as Stephen Leckie rightly said, at the moment, businesses really want somebody to talk to more than anything. 
Um, I think we've been very lucky in lots of ways in all the Scottish government and UK government schemes that have been available, but we've still got a large number of businesses that haven't been able to take advantage of those for, for various reasons. Um, and it's very difficult when you see your business falling off a, a cliff to know what to do. So that one-to-one -one support's been essential. Barbara mentioned the importance of peer support and peer-to-peer -peer learning, and that's something that we've developed over the years. And the peer learning sessions that we do, we've now ramped up to around four or five uh, a week. Um, these are limited to 20 businesses, but at the moment they're all oversubscribed, which is actually a good sign because it shows that businesses are looking to learn. Many of the subjects are around upskilling, around digital topics or looking at how to manage finances in difficult times, quite a range of topics. Um, but we respond to what the clients are looking for, so every month is, is different according to what people are asking to do. But the other peer-to-peer -peer support is around sexual support. We have um, two very active creative sector support, uh, peer groups um, which meet regularly and they're meeting online at the moment uh, and that's very powerful in terms of what they're able to do and supporting each other and sharing. We also have four active women's enterprise networks across Perth and Kim Ross and again they're meeting online. And every month we have a bigger network event. So we had the June one last night. We had around 30 businesses online. Um, we we're actually looking at a subject um, around the card system, MyConnex, which I know a lot of you will be familiar with, My Rewards, and Colin Monroe talking about the benefits of businesses linking into those, which I hope will spread across rural Perthshire um, as well as Perth. We also have a well-developed mentoring programme. Um, we've got accreditation from the Scottish Mentoring Network and we've trained around 70 mentors over the last few years. So MD that would either like to volunteer as a mentor or become a mentee, we can provide uh, training and, and awareness around that. Just could you go on to the next slide, please? So just to emphasise that, that we, we feel that that learning in, in a flexible environment and being able to dip in and out of different subjects is really important. So we try and cover all of these essential areas which are around what you need to do when you're either starting or growing a business and incorporate them into and both the learning and the peer support um, and the one to one support that, that we can that we can give. Go on to the next slide, please, Chris. Just put this slide up because actually it's never been more relevant. We we say this anyway, but um, making an enterprise happen um, doesn't tend to start with a formal plan. It's, it tends to start with conversations, and we're finding that's more um, more the case now than ever. And I think that's so important that whole relational model of business support, which you know the chamber believes in as well which is about you know, talking to people about their plans and dreams and working, working the way through it. Um, and I think maybe at some point a business plan comes into it, but you really need to have a lot of conversations first to, to, to make that happen successfully. And next slide, please, Chris. Just wanted to put this one up because we've talked a bit about digital already this morning and I think this map shows, though it's slightly out of date, I suspect this, the percentages are, are quite similar still. And it just highlights that although we're not quite as far behind um, the south of Scotland and Highlands in terms of digital skills, there's still a huge gap um, compared to the central belt and the, and the cities. Um, and a lot of that isn't about expecting businesses to have super comp uh, super sophisticated digital skill. It's just about them understanding what digital can do for their businesses. Um, so we put a lot of emphasis on that in the subjects that we cover. And sometimes that's just about getting people to use simple applications more effectively, um, getting their accounting on a cloud accounting system, using social media effectively. Um, it's not about learning how to code or do um, the advanced digital. And we've seen fantastic um, examples since March of businesses, um, businesses who literally could uh, were struggling to use their smartphone well in March are now 
delivering a lot of their services actually online. Um, so although it's been um, a really difficult time, one of the good things that I think will come out of this is a recognition from a lot of smaller businesses that digital can actually transform the way they do business and give them better resilience, opportunity to survive into the future. Thanks, Chris. Just quickly on numbers, um, we we probably have between 25 and 20 new clients coming to us every month. Um, that's a mixture of new startups and businesses that already exist. Um, but since the end of March, we've actually had 152 new clients. And I think that just highlights that need in Perth and Knoss for people to um, connect with other businesses and to, to get support. We've done 45 events across that period um, with uh, nearly 600 attendances. So that, that's all encouraging. Um, I think that might drop off a little bit once people start getting back into business, but it shows that there's a real appetite to take part in things like that and to, and to learn. Thanks, Chris. I just wanted to touch on a, a project that we started to, to develop last year. Um, we got leader support, leader funding support and Perth and Knoss, Scottish Enterprise and Scottish Government support to develop a project called Smart Villages. And again, this concept has kind of come into its own with everything that's happened since March. It's all about creating a smarter local community, um, often grouped around a portal. We have Smart Village portals, but it's also about getting communities, both community groups and social enterprises and businesses to think about how digital can help them to go forward. Um, so it really feeds into that place-based uh, policy. It feeds into the whole idea of um, using local services and buying local, um, of increasing digital skills um, and creating a more sustainable economy. Could you go on to the next slide, Chris, please? So a, a smart village consists of um, a, a core portal um, digital champions in the community or in the businesses, um, that source of local information, um, a conduit to enterprise support, which is really important from our point of view, and that essential connectivity. Um, and as they develop and become more sophisticated digital solutions, so we're working with the Knoss Gigabit Town Group in, in Knoss area, for example, where they're looking at becoming the first Gigabit Town um, and then looking at how smart village structure or concept around that could help to incorporate um, more, more interest. Uh, we've got um, 10 smart villages in the pipeline in Perth and Kinross, and we just launched our first e-commerce smart village with um, uh, two weeks ago, and that's called Persian Artisans. And that was after working with a group of artisans, makers and artists. Um, who wanted an easy way of marketing and selling their goods. So that's a pilot with nine Persia artists and makers, um, and we'll be promoting that over the next couple of weeks. We just wanted to launch it softly, make sure that there were no gremlins, but there's other smart villages in the pipeline that will emulate that. I just want to finish, thanks Chris, I just want to finish with uh, looking at uh, an initiative that we, we were um, asked to pilot our enterprise support right across other parts of Scotland by the Scottish Government last year. So we started to work with some other communities, including here in Gorms um, and Borders. Um, it goes without saying this has been a huge time of need and small rural businesses in lots of ways have been hit disproportionately. There's a higher level of self-employment in rural areas and the smaller businesses haven't had that resilience to be able to carry on. In fact, more than 60% closed pretty much when closed down, uh, lockdown happened in March. Some have been able to trade a bit online, but there's many that doubt whether they'll be able to get, get back. One of the other things we were aware of just working with rural enterprises generally is that there's no single source of information on who and where they were. So we'd already decided to do a business directory as part of the Smart Village um, project. Um, so we've kind of fast tracked that and formed a directory called Rural Enterprise Directory Scotland. And 
helping businesses to go on that and therefore promote themselves meant that they would need the funding to get up and running. So we decided to be ambitious and launch uh, a crowdfunding scheme to raise money for micro businesses um, across Scotland, which we actually just launched yesterday. Could you go on to the next slide, um, please, Chris, and then the next one? So we're calling it REDS, Rural Enterprise Directory Scotland, nothing to do with supporting Liverpool, despite last night. Um, and it is about raising that funding. Uh, we're hoping that by putting the crowdfunding campaign out there that we'll get support through central government and the agencies. We've got discussions going with High Scottish Enterprise and the South of Scotland Agency. Um, build the directory around that. So if a business wants to apply to that fund, it has to go on the directory, which means that we can then direct them to the various organisations for, for support if we can't support them ourselves. And could you go on to the next slide, Chris? Um, so that's really what REDS is all about, um, raising that initial fund. I've got a, a, a hope that we can have a £10 million fund eventually, because one of the things that stops a lot of people from getting businesses off the ground is that access to small amounts of money. And if you think about what the Benny Higgins Economic Recovery Plan said to government earlier this week, young people are hugely affected by the COVID crisis. So we see um, that funding being hugely important to help uh, young people in rural areas to develop their ideas and get businesses off the ground where they can't get jobs or the job guarantee if, if government decides to, to do that. Um, so that's, uh, thanks Chris, last slide's just the Grobis. Um, so that's a kind of overview of where we are, what we've just um, been involved with. Um, we hope that from a rural perspective, we will have a group very much like the Perth Place Leadership Forum that we can all work together so that Perth as a city and rural Perth and Kronos can work even more effectively together going forward. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Jackie. Uh, just to echo that last point that you made there, it's certainly the Perth Ambassador Network is very much both about the power of the city and also the important rural communities that you've you've outlined so we'd be delighted uh, if everyone could work together uh, in both uh, parts of the region uh, on the initiatives that you've talked about there um thanks very much to all of our speakers uh, we now have an opportunity for questions and we've had quite a few coming in uh, just kicking off i think there's there's quite a theme actually in the early questions which are all about uh, the sort of opportunities around about the green economy um, Mike Robinson, John Ferguson, and, and uh, also Annie Lee Carmichael, all covering that. And I suppose the, just to wrap it all up, there's, there's three parts to that. And maybe I, if I could come to you in this one, Barbara, how do we um, look to prioritise a lot of the uh, opportunities that we've got in the uh, in the post-COVID era, particularly around about uh, addressing climate change and a, a different future approach? And uh, John's point is around about how we have an integrated region wide approach, obviously thinking from the TAE perspective uh, and also Annalee uh, saying what what you think the strengths are that we can leverage for these green opportunities. OK, I'm going to ask David um, Little John <coughs> if he's still on the call to come in um, and answer some of this, but there is an absolute commitment and I would want to provide that reassurance. Um, to everyone watching this morning, um, that it will be a coordinated approach. The council can't do it by ourselves. Um, we can't, you can't do it by yourselves. There needs to be a collective. There needs, there will be a lot of other areas who will be looking to seize opportunities round about green, uh, uh, green, the green economy, sorry. But it is, I've been looking at the draft action plan and there is very much a, you know, sort of an invest in green, in green, ugh, clean growth um, and working together to be able to, to do that. But if David's still on the line, if we could ask David to come in. Thanks, Barbara. Happy to um, uh, help add something to, 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 the, to the questions. We're in a really difficult position just now. The, the, the impact of COVID-19 on businesses and individuals, as we all know, is, is, is absolutely fundamental and, and in some cases existence changing. Um, so we need to get 
our initial response to that crisis um, underway and, and Barbara has talked about you know, you know the partnerships action plan that will, will help do that. S some of the questions are about about climate change and using that as an opportunity to do things differently and that, that's absolutely right. Climate change ultimately in the longer term is still much more significant for, for the planet than one particular virus and that's not to underplay as I said, the, the impact of the virus. So nothing has changed in that respect. We still need to drive much more quickly and much more coordinated fashion towards uh, uh, a net zero carbon economy and focus on, on clean growth as, as, as the way forward. And clean growth is one of the pillars of, of the Council's own economic strategy and also the regional strategy. We have an ambitious regional economic strategy that features and focuses on clean growth. That's just been, if you like, COVID checked. The partners, uh, including those in the private sector and higher education, further education sector, have just worked through that plan to make sure, is it still fit for purpose in the world that we now, that we now face ourselves in? And if anything, it's re-emphasised the need, A, to address inequality, um, from real concerns about income inequality gap widening as a, as a consequence of, of, of COVID-19. But fundamentally, um, it's about accelerating our clean growth ambitions. Um, John Ferguson had asked about uh, a kind of regional approach. Uh, absolutely, this, this has to be done both regionally and, and, and nationally. The heads of economic development across the region meet uh, monthly. There's a Tay Cities Region Joint Committee, which is the kind of guardian, if you like, of our, of our economic strategy. And, and, and the challenge is, is, is both ways in terms of what can we do faster and with more pace, with more purpose in driving forward some of those, those clean growth aspirations. Um, across Perth and Kinross, our ambition is, is, is enormous. You would have seen some of the coverage in the last few weeks about the Perth West project, which is potentially Scotland's largest net zero carbon project, absolutely focused on, on clean growth, including some innovative energy solutions, some innovative digital solutions. So I think we're at the, the, the forefront of what we want to do in the future. And of course, as everyone on this call will, will, will know, we have a very, very strong cl clean growth business based on the largest proportions of uh, large numbers of, of your micro renewables firms in, in Scotland are based in our area. So we're starting from a strong position. If anything, this has just um, hardened our resolve to, to do everything with, 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 with more pace. So hopefully that's given you a kind of flavour of, of, of some of the questions that are being, being, being answered, Stephen. Thanks very much, uh, David and Barbara. Um, another theme that seems to have come through is around about how we market uh, the region. I think there's all of us uh, are hoping that there will be uh, a, a boost in terms of staycations as the various bits of our economy open up. And uh, Stephen uh, Gorton from Volpo is asking about what we can do to market our region to the rest of the UK to capitalise on that domestic tourism and leisure uh, opportunity. So maybe I think that's one, maybe Stephen and, and Vicky from the Chamber, as well as uh, uh, Barbara and David from the, the local authority. And, and also your thoughts, Jackie, from a rural perspective, because obviously cities tend to get the focus, but a lot of our hospitality industries in the rural parts of Persia. And uh, Stephen, I'll start off, if I may, um, I'll leave the Perth and Kinross specific marketing to um, professionals in PKC. On the national front, Visit Scotland are about to launch their national marketing campaign. The country is about to spend millions of pounds on this in the next seven working days. Um, Creep Hydro, we launched ours this week to with limited success. So self-catering opens a week today. Um, now, for example, in Creef, we have 60 self-catering units. 11 are sold next Friday night and for next weekend. We will not pick up 60 units between our 50 units between now and then. And on the hotel front, hotels are opening 15th of July. Well, I've not spoken to any hotelier who is sitting with occupancy more than 10% for the 15th until the 30th of July. And no hotelier is sitting at more than 20% for the month of August. This industry is still in deep trouble. 
So, so and, the, and part of the reason why occupancy is so low is because the good people of Scotland, unlike the recalcitrants who seem to think it's okay to visit and dump their refuse and stuff on the sides of the um, roads at Highland, Highland Perthshire and, uh, and Loch Lomond, for example, the good people of Scotland are not prepared yet to come out. And until the First Minister, and I've had phone calls with the First Minister and Fergus Ewing and John Swinney about this, and they understand and they're empathetic. They're sincere when they say, look, they have to consider the health of the nation first of all, and then they'll balance that with the state of the economy. And that will switch, and it is switching as we start to reopen the economy. But for the moment, um, until the marketing campaigns kick off, until the First Minister says, look, it's now safe to go out, people are still reticent to make their bookings. So that's the bad news for the state of certainly tourism and hospitality in Scotland, which represents something like 6% of GDP and employs 10% of the workforce. There's the national picture. How about PKC? Do you have anything to add on the on the local authority perspective on that, David or Barbara? I mean, we're working closely with with Visit Scotland. Visit Visit Scotland is the has actually kind of statutory responsibility for visitor mar marketing, not not the council per se. But clearly, we're working closely with locally Carolyn Warburton and our team. Uh, I would be interested to hear some further comments from you know those in, those in this meeting about what they think the council could do specifically. Very mindful that every every part of Scotland, every part of the UK is now trying to promote itself as as a kind of COVID safe, great place to come and, and and have a staycation. So we need to be careful that in that sea of localised marketing, some of the kind of key messages don't get lost. That's not to say we shouldn't be doing something, but I think we have to be very smart about what it is we're marketing. And there is something um, in our initial thinking about you know, Perthshire, Kinrosshire being um, you know, safe, green, healthy place to come and spend a staycation, not too far from the, the, the urban population. We don't have this, the same extent of, of, of fragile, remote, rural communities that, 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 that some parts of Scotland do, where there is still a, a general concern about um, a, an influx of people from, from, from further afield coming in. We don't have the same concerns. Generally, there, there will be some, some individual villages, towns where, where, where there may be some, some concerns, but generally we want to kind of say that we're welcoming, we're open for business and we're not too far away. Um, but we need to get a little bit smarter beyond that, because as I said, that kind of message is applicable to, to, to most parts of Scotland. So fundamentally, Visit Scotland's messaging is really important. And that's what we can do in Perthshire and Kinrosshire that, that complements that. Um, but very happy to take um, views from the business community as to what the council could specifically do in, 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 in that respect. Some of the work that we're doing at the moment in, in our towns, for example, today we'll be publishing some, some guidance to business to demonstrate and support what they may need to do to get customers back into their premises. And that includes food beverage uh, outlets as, as, as well as retail. So in a supportive way, how we can ensure that pavements are wide enough, how we can ensure that we support um, outdoor tables and chairs in a way which we, we might not have been able to do uh, before, how we balance that with ensuring access for uh, the, the disabled is, is, is not compromised, but above all, how can we ensure that perhaps as the weather starts to move in towards autumn and we're still in the, the kind of um, uh, context of social and physical distancing, how we can support um, outdoor queuing, can we can we support businesses to um, erect coverings, awnings, whatever, to make sure that customers are not kind of queuing in the rain. All of that will be kind of issued today in a set of, of guidance to, to businesses across Perth and Kinross in a way that we can support business to, to, to adapt to this uh, uh, adapt to this new environment and that's actually just as important as, as as a wider marketing campaign it will only take a number of people to visit our towns and and, and, and our city and don't have a, a kind of safe welcoming experience uh, and, and and they'll turn away so the physical 
um, uh, support that we can offer is probably just as important as anything in terms of, of, of national marketing of the area. But as I said, very happy, not necessarily just now, but to take some ideas um, from the ambassadors as to what we could do. And of course, what the ambassadors themselves can do in terms of promoting uh, our area. Stephen, if I could just come in from a, a rural perspective, really just adding on to what Dave's just said, but I suppose it links back to that previous question about uh, green economy support for that, because any, um, I think any marketing we're doing around getting visitors back needs to respond, one, to what the local communities within Perth and Kinross want to happen with visitors, um, but also that that links into the whole green tourism, responsible tourism um, move movement, and therefore it becomes a more a sort of healthier um, approach to visitor. I mean, the Dunkeld and Burnham community we've done a little bit of work with, and they've um, they've ha hijacked their tourism association website so that all the businesses locally can on that, promote that, and then use that to put the messages out to how they would like the visitors to come, how they'd like them to behave and what's available to them. So I think um, local communities can play a, a huge part in managing that process. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, the, I was just going to add that uh, I think uh, Mike Robinson and his question at the start talked about this, just reminding ourselves about the distinctiveness of of the city of Perth and the wider region. And of course, all of that work that we did a year or so ago on the Perth story is, is even more relevant now. I mean, the Live Life Well uh, tagline that, that uh, was created as part of that, that is, that is what people are looking for in this environment. We've got, we've got a heap of questions. We don't have a lot of time. There's, just, there's a couple of areas I'd like to move into because quite a few people have been asking about this. Uh, the first is, what are the plans for Perth City Centre? Obviously, retail generally has taken a, a hit across the whole of the, the UK and about all of this. Are there any changes that are being considered around about the layout of the city centre? Uh, and also we had a question from uh, Stephen at Haddon Group around about the role of construction in all of this, because there's a lot of added value that construction does in terms of the multiplier effect in the economy. and. And we know that there's a lot of uh, work underway uh, in terms of housing construction and other infrastructure at the moment. Maybe one to uh, for Barbara or David to pick up. Uh, Barbara can probably answer on the, the first uh, part, certainly in terms of um, the work that the council is about to, to, to do in terms of the physical alterations to the, the city centre, uh, in terms of our success in securing uh, national funding to, to, to assist with that. Uh, Barbara's not actually with us in the oh. meeting at the moment. OK. Um, uh, I don't actually have the have, have the detail, but clearly through the kind of s spaces for people um, fund, we were successful in, in securing over over a million pounds um, to start some of the, the kind of physical distancing measures, particularly looking at some of the the pinch points. Um, uh, you know, Perth Bridge, for example, being being a be, being an example of where it would be very difficult to maintain any form of of, of uh, social distancing, whether it's a metre or, or, or two metres in a narrow carriageway. So we've been very mindful that you know, we already have a largely pedestrianised city centre. Um, so it, it has been kind of um, very careful in, in what we need to do. We don't want to make it more difficult for people to use the city centre by closing off uh, to, too many streets, etc. Um, so those are some of the changes that you'll start to see, but I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the, the, the exact detail. It's, it's Barbara's team that has been uh, uh, working on, on, on that. Um, and on the construction and infrastructure side? Uh, absolutely, we've been very mindful of that and we're We've maintained, for example, a, a, a planning system um, th throughout uh, lockdown. We were the first council to 
uh, in Scotland to run a, an, an online planning committee, very mindful that the ability to continue to process planning applications is really critical in kickstarting the economy and ensuring that our, our house building industry can continue. Construction is really vital in terms of uh, pushing forward our, our sustainable growth aspirations. So we've done everything that we can. The Council will continue to have a role in uh, in leading that process from the planning side, but also actually as a procurer of, of construction projects, we're we're still going to, um, the world hasn't stopped. I mean, there, there, there's certainly uh, a desire to, to, to pause, reflect and make sure that there is an opportunity to build back better, but it is about building back. It's not about stopping. Um, we just need to make sure that what we're doing are the right things to do going forward. As I said earlier, this is an opportunity um, to focus on, on, on clean growth um, rather than any growth. Um, so uh, absolutely those, those projects will, will, will continue. Thanks David. Just as a, a final theme because that's us reached 11, um, I wondered whether each of our presenters had a, a message that if, if they had one thing that they wanted the Scottish Government to do that would help our uh, region. Obviously a lot of what we're going to do moving forward and the speed at which we can uh, move forward is determined by some of the changes that there are in terms of lockdown, etc. So do you, any any messages that you've got for the Scottish Government? The, the, well, the, certainly the message from the, the from the Council's perspective is the, the scale of the challenge is way beyond the, the means of one local authority to, to, to resolve. The Scottish Government has stepped in very helpfully with with grants to, to, to businesses and the UK Government in terms of the of the furlough scheme. Some form of assistance needs to be continued. Um, when you see the detail of the economic recovery plan, um, that we'll be kind of publishing shortly. It comes with a with a hefty price tag, so there needs to be a degree of national coordination and national understanding about the, the scale of the challenge. And I think for our area, we need to be mindful that Perth and Kinross, although performing pr pretty well, we have been hit particularly badly because of our dependence on hospitality, retail, tourism. Um, and, and therefore, in allocating assistance, we need to be mindful that we don't want to accentuate and worsen kind of economic inequality. So the government certainly has to be mindful of that in terms of, of where it directs its funding to. It's areas like Perth and Kinross and others that have got a high dependency in tourism that need to be given additional support because the scale of, of, of the challenges is, is certainly beyond the means of, of one body such as the council to, to, to resolve. That would be my kind of, kind of principal message going forward. Yeah. Back, do you have anything to build on that from a rural perspective? Yeah, I think my one message would be to the government not to forget about the vast number of very small rural businesses that form the back of the rural economy when they're coming up with schemes to go forward. Um, these small businesses need support and they need flexible funding. So um, and sometimes they get edged out by the by the bigger businesses. So that would be my message really. Tourism and hospitality. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? We missed the first part of that, Stephen. I'm sorry, you have to repeat it, please. So I know that you'll have a particular perspective with tourism and hospitality. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to add on uh, in terms of a message to government? Well, there is, and we're doing this via the um, Tourism Task Force Working Group, uh, which I am involved with. What I'd say is the country has not been in, in as weak an economic situation since the end of World War II. Since then, it is businesses that have been subsidising the country and the government. Uh, for the moment, right now, the government must borrow heavily and reinvest back into companies and counties like ours in order to get ourselves going again. And in return, we will employ more people get back into profit and pay our taxes. So the 
the evolution of the economy will start again. Part of the process of the, the tourism task force and the investment element led by Malcolm Buchanan, the chair of RBS Scotland, we're asking, going to be asking for a number of things. One is a VAT reduction, which comes from Westminster for hospitality in particular, being the most expensive VAT in Europe, apart from Latvia. And secondly, is um, continued holiday of business rates for, for companies like ours is a significant cost each year. This is not a grant we're looking for. This is a reduction in tax, which will allow us to get our businesses back open again, employ people, get back into profit, get reinvesting again and pay more again in tax. And so it goes round. Thanks very much, Stephen. Um, I'm sorry we don't have uh, any more time to cover off any more questions, but uh, we have been uh, logging all of them, so we will make sure that all of the questions are, are answered uh, in writing uh, through a follow up. Could I thank uh, all of our speakers uh, today? It's been a, a really engaging session. Um, I think we've had some uh, very clear themes around about partnership and collaboration, doing things differently uh, and uh, having to move quickly as well because uh, of the particular challenges there are in the economy. I just wanted to cover up very briefly a couple of uh, final things. Um, I, uh, at the last meeting, we talked uh, about what we were doing in terms of the ambassador network uh, and to try and widen it. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, you saw the slides that we had running just before uh, you joined about the benefits of being an ambassador and I hope you'll encourage uh, your contacts to join. Uh, we did talk about funding at the last uh, meeting. Um, obviously, in light of the COVID situation, uh, we have decided to put that on hold and we need some time to think about how we fund activity moving forward. Two, two final appeals from me. One is on behalf of our region's young people. Um, they are going to be amongst the, the worst hit by this pandemic and, and as some of our speakers have touched on this. Uh, so it's important that we do everything that we can to try to secure their prospects in terms of employment. So anyone that can get involved in the Developing Young Workforce Initiative in Perth and Kinross uh, would be much appreciated. Secondly, um, you'll remember in January we heard from Mike Robinson, uh, who was recently elected as chair of the Perth Place Leadership Forum, which was formerly the Perth City Development Board. That forum is now trying to uh, put together a team of people that will be able to take forward the various themes around about uh, shaping a growing city, zero carbon Perth, which we've talked about here, a connected city, inclusion and social justice, enterprise and prosperity, and also revitalizing the city centre. So uh, from what I've seen in the Q&A, a lot of the themes that you're obviously interested in. So. We're looking for specialist input to help with a series of working groups. So if any of you have a specialist insight or passion, if you could please get in touch with Mike or, or myself, we're both on LinkedIn and we can give you the details of, of that. But uh, in conclusion, if we could just thank everyone uh, for coming today. Normally we'd have a great opportunity to network over your day. Apologies Stephen, we just lost you towards the end there. I don't know if you wanted to re-wrap up there, sorry. Sorry, I was just saying thanking everyone for uh, their support today. Uh, hopefully we'll have a, an opportunity to meet again either face to face or online uh, in the autumn uh, and just thank everyone for uh, coming along today.